gozaimasu, konnichiwa, konbangwa, for whenever you're listening to the Joshi Pod, your weekly podcast about the world of Japanese women's wrestling. Joshi Wrestling! I'm your host, Eric Howard, t- coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California. Before we get started, I want to send out uh, a big get well to Pond, Pro Wrestling Eve, Dan and Emily Reed's dog. I'm a big dog guy, so it makes me a little sad to uh, hear when dogs are under the weather. Also, what makes me under the weather is the transphobes that are so upset about Nyla Rose winning the AEW women's title. First off, congratulations to Nyla Rose. Uh, she's done numerous tours of Japan. Um, these transphobes, I mean, if you're one of those people, please open your mind. Please open your heart and accept people. I wish nothing bad of you. I just hope someday you realize that we're all human beings. Getting off my soapbox now. Uh, it's been a fun week of Joshi Wrestling. It's been uh, also a fun week for me. I'm traveling to Japan in March, and I've gotten a couple of confirmations on interviews, one of which is really blown my mind. I can't wait to go in. Uh, I leave San Diego on March 17th. I will be in Japan from the 18th to the 26th. And again, this interview has blown my mind. Who's agreed to do an interview with my little old podcast. Uh, stay tuned, stay subscribed, wait for those. Uh, I'm going to try to release one while I'm in Japan. Last week's episode with the alpha female Jazzy Gabbert uh, was received very positively. I've gotten a lot of uh, positive feedback. Thank you all for the support and uh, listening and, and commenting and engaging on social media with me. I sincerely appreciate it. I would also like to encourage you guys to please subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. You have no idea how much it means when you guys leave reviews for me uh, on the uh, different platforms. I read them. I appreciate them. And again, thank you so much. On the show this week, we have our three count headlines of the week, including another stardom wrestler announcing her retirement. We review the big stardom show from last Saturday at Curricken Hall, which had a last minute change to the main event. We look ahead to the coming shows this week in Japan. We also take a look to see where Joshi performers are performing outside of Japan, including Akane Fujita, going to be in my neck of the woods pretty soon. And in our big main event interview, we have part two of my conversation with we talk about many of the women in Gato Move, including Mei Suruga, Obi, Mitsuru, Yuna, Rinrin, and of course, the legendary Lulu Pencil. He has tremendous insight on them as people and performers. It's uh, something I think you guys will find very entertaining. If you missed part one, it was released uh, as a bonus show earlier this week, and uh, Aki's a pretty amazing guy. He gambled on himself and uh, trained a bit in India, and then... Uh, after getting some training, started looking abroad to get booked and, and work other places. And uh, he eventually ended up in Japan, uh, moved to Japan, something I wish uh, I had the guts to do. Uh, his sense of adventure and, and bravery or something I look up to. Uh, he eventually made his way to Gato Move. And we talked a little bit about that at the end of episode, uh, the uh, part one of his com- the conversation with him. But now again, in part two, we talk about the women of Gato Move. And he uh, has a lot to say. Without further delay, let's get into the biggest headlines of the week that are brought to you, as always, by Quiet Wyatt Designs. If you need a t-shirt, a poster, or anything else, Snapchat filter. He does a good job with those. Reach out to no one in the team at Quiet Wyatt Designs. Search for them on Facebook, Q-U-I-E-T-W-Y-A-T-T, one word, designs. You can also find some of their products on Redbubble and on Twitter at Q-W-D underscore official. No one's planning a wedding. So hit them up and give them some work. Weddings aren't cheap. Headline number one. Do you believe in miracles? Tokyo Joshi Pro's Raku picked up her first career win on February 11th. She teamed with Maki Ito and Pom Harajuku to defeat Rika Tatsumi, Mi Watanabe, and Suzume. The crowd went crazy when Raku picked up the big win. She hit the Kagayaki on Miyu and, and uh, got the win for her team. Her finisher is named after a bullet train used for, uh, for testing purposes, and it's you don't see it very often, so they say if you see it, you're going to have good luck, and uh, she obviously had some great luck by picking up the win. Uh, Maki Ito has uh, taken her under her wing a little bit. Let's hope she doesn't teach her any new words. Uh, I saw one today that I don't uh, want Raku to ever know what it means. After that big win, how do you follow that up? Raku and Maki Ita will face Miyu and Rika for the Princess Tag Titles on March 1st at KFC Hall in Ria Goku. Congratulations, Raku. Headline number two. Another stardom retirement? Citing lingering injuries, 
Leo Nozaki has announced that she'll be retiring from wrestling. It's sad when a woman has to retire from wrestling because of injuries and not going out on her own terms like we've seen with uh, Hozuki and uh, and Kagetsu. The, there were some mounting injuries with Kagetsu, but I think she really has gone out on her own terms. She could have continued if she wanted to, but uh, uh, it's just not a, not a nice way to, to see a career end. She's going to have her final match on February 16th, where she team with Saya Ida and face Jungle Kiona and Ruaka, uh, former members of the Jan group. And we wish her the very best in her uh, future careers. Headline number three. M.I.A. Yagi has returned. Andres Miyagi appeared at a Just Tap Out show this past week. She claims to be an unemployed freelancer. Let's see if this is just a talent trade or loan to uh, Just Tap Out. Uh, there's been some talent going back and forth with, uh, stardom and, and, uh, just tap out and, uh, let's hope she gets, uh, revitalized and, uh, gets some momentum and, and comes back stronger in, in stardom. There's just not a place for her right now in stardom, uh, after Julia, uh, dissolved their uh, relationship and she doesn't really fit in with a Donna Del Mundo group. Yeah. Let's hope Andres, who I'm a big, I'm a big, big fan of. Let's hope, uh, she finds some, uh, Finds her niche and finds her way back into stardom sooner than later. The show of the week this week is brought to you by Ground Zero Pro Wrestling. If you're in the Southern California area, you want to make it down to Imperial Beach on Saturday, March 7th. They have a stacked card with a big main event featuring Andy Brown defending the Ground Zero Championship against Ray Rosas, my mom's favorite wrestler, Ray Rosas. Uh, These are two of the most underrated guys in Southern California, probably in in all of the U.S. Uh, These guys should be signed somewhere. Also on the show for you Joshi fans, there will be a three-way match between Vipress and Viva Van and Miranda Elise who's appeared in stardom back in 2018. And it's probably just a matter of time before Vipress and Viva Van make it over to uh, Japan. For more information on the show, please visit facebook.com slash ground zero SD, support them, follow them, like them on Facebook and Twitter and uh, follow ground zero San Diego. You won't be disappointed. Stardom show from February 8th from Quirk and Hall, the way to the major league. Uh, the big news going into this show was that Saudi pulled out of the main event at the last minute with Mayu Iwatani uh, she, uh, was claimed to be sick. It doesn't sound like stardom's too happy with her after pulling out, but, uh, she was, uh, replaced by a former stardom, stardom performer and the ace of marvelous Takumi Aroha over 1500 people in attendance. Another great crowd for uh, stardom at Currican hall. The opening dark match was, uh, Itsuki Hoshino getting her first win by beating Leo Onizaki in three minutes. Uh, not, it's a, it's a typical stardom, uh, dark match and, uh, Hoshino is getting her first big win, which is uh, nice to see. And, uh, she's got some, some potential there. The next match was a gauntlet tag team match where, uh, Tokyo cyber squads, death Yamasan and Layla Hirsch, uh, were in a match with the Sayas and Hina and Rina and Jamie and Zoe from, uh, Oedo Tai and stars, Starlight kid and Tam Nakano. Uh, it started with the uh, stars pinning Hina and Rina. Uh, then the Sayas beat stars. Then Jamie and Zoe beat uh, the Sayas. And finally, the Tokyo Cyber Squad, uh, Death Yamasan and Layla Hirsch, picked up the win over uh, Jamie and Zoe. The next match was the number one contender match for the uh, Artist of Stardom uh, Trios title. Uh, Oedo Tai was uh, Natsuko, Natsu, and Saki facing Tokyo Cyber Squad's Hanakamura, Jungle Kion, and Konami. Oedo Tai came out with new gear and new music. Uh, the makeover is almost complete. JPQ's Saki Kashima picked up uh, the win by pinning Konami and to have Oedo Tai as the number one contenders for the trio's title. Who will the champions be? In the next match, Donna Del Mundo, Julia, Maika, and Shuri Kondo defeated Queen's Quest, Azumi, Momo Watanabe, and Utami Hayashishida in 17 minutes. Uh, Julia pinned Azumi for the titles. You had to think that the Donna Del Mundo was going to get the win there. Uh, they are on a roll. They are the new uh, top heel faction, I think, right now in in the group. Uh, or I'm sorry, in the uh, in the company. And uh, Julia ascending up the ranks in the company, and uh, she picks up the big win for her team. 
the next match, another uh, title match, the Wonder of Stardom title, uh, Arisa Hoshki defeated B Priestley in about 17 minutes. These two work really, really well together. Great chemistry. B is very, very good. Uh, it's, it's really nice when she can go in there and, and face the top level competition. She shows she belongs in that picture. Uh, the Brazilian kick has always got the big win. And I think it's defense number 10 for Arissa. So she's uh, nearing the defense record for that title. And the big main event was uh, Takumi Aroha facing Mayu Iwatani and beating Mayu Iwatani, and I think a surprise, in just over 20 minutes. Uh, as good as Sari is, I don't know if she could have had a match as good as this, as good as this with Mayu. Takumi was bigger, stronger, ragdolling Mayu, poor Mayu around the ring. Uh, it's, it's I'm very thankful Mayu is uh, as flexible as she is. If not, she would have been broken in half. Uh, but uh, so uh, Takumi did pick up the big win, and uh, after the match. Uh, Oedo Tai came in and attacked Mayu. Saki is screaming at Mayu that she wants to have a, a match. Takumi comes back in and runs off Oedo Tai. Mayu says she wants to have a rematch with Takumi this time for the uh, the World of Stardom title. And uh, hopefully that'll happen down the road. Backstage, uh, during the, the little presser they do, uh, Jungle Kiona came and challenged Mayu for the World of Stardom title. And that match will take place on February 23rd in Nagoya. Uh, another great show by Stardom. Uh, Stardom's on fire right now. Uh, every show they put on right now is just uh, really, really good, especially their Kurikan shows. Uh, they're loading up and putting on some great shows right now. The show's this week in Japan on the 15th. Stardom is at Shinkiba First Ring. Kagetsu is doing her retirement uh, gauntlet match where she faces everybody on the roster for a minute. This show will also feature the High Speed Grand Prix uh, where in this show, uh, Azumi is going to face uh, former Joshi Pod guest Zoe Sky. Also on the 15th, Ice Ribbon's at the uh, Dojo in Saitama. On the 16th, uh, Stardom's back at Shinkiba First Ring again. Uh, Utami Haya Shishida will defend her future Stardom title against uh, Saya Kamatani. Uh, there's also going to be a 5 on 5 Stars versus Uedo Tai match. Also on the 16th, Tokyo Joshi Pro is at the Ice Ribbon Dojo in Saitama. Pure J is at the Tokyo Arts uh, Center White Studio. Oz Academy is at Ngunma at the Green Dome. All the uh, Oz Academy regulars are going to be on the show, including Mayumi Ozaki, Aja Kong, Akino, Sonoko Kato, Sukasha Fujimoto, and others. Uh, on the 16th, Diana is at the Diana jo Dojo in Kanagawa. Uh, Sendai Girls has an evening show at Shinkiba First Ring. Uh, the big match on that show is Chihiro Hashimoto is facing Kagetsu on Kagetsu's uh, retirement tour. On the 19th, Sendai Girls are in the Miyagi Ward Cultural Center. This show's already sold out. It's a pretty big main event with Dash Chisako and Hiroya Matsumoto facing Chihiro Hashimoto and Yu for the world tag titles. Sari, Miko Satamura, and Sakura Hirota are also on the card. On February 15th in Madrid, Tokyo Joshi Pro's Mina Shirakawa faces Nightshade at the Japan Weekend, which is a cultural festival uh, celebrating all things Japan. Uh, you will also be on the show. You will also be appearing at Melbourne City Wrestling on March 21st. You can get for more information on that show by uh, visiting melbournecitywrestling.com.au. Tokyo Joshi Pro will be in Tampa, Florida for WrestleMania weekend on Friday, April 3rd at WrestleCon. You can get tickets at WrestleCon.ShowClicks.com. Some Tokyo Joshi Pro talent will also be on other shows during WrestleMania week. Uh, Maki Ito and Miyu Yamashita are scheduled for the Joey Ryan Party Show on April 4th. Speaking of Miyu Yamashita, she has an amazing t-shirt out now. You can email Miyu, M-I-Y-U-U-U.TJP at gmail.com to order one. Also on WrestleMania weekend, Venny, the wrestler formerly known as Asuka in Japan, will make her U.S. debut at Effie's Big Gay Brunch on April 4th. For tickets, go to makeitgayer.eventbrite.com. I love that. Uh, let's support Venny. Uh, she's uh, super talented, uh, not really new to the game. She's got a couple of years under her belt, but uh, she's improving by leaps and bounds, and I'm very happy that she's getting the opportunity to come to the U.S. to perform. Ice Ribbon's Akane Fujita will be in the U.S. from March 2nd to April 14th. Uh, she's available for bookings by reaching out to kikataru.booking at gmail.com. She'll be appearing at the Fist Combat Show on March 6th in San Diego. 
She'll be in a 10,000 thumbtacks, 10,000 thumbtacks, easy for me to say match. You can get for more information on that match by visiting facebook.com slash fist combat TV. Uh, I'm hoping to have a chat with her while she's in town as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Joshi pod. Yeah, you heard that right. Japanese women's wrestling. And I am Brian Pillman Jr. And I'm here to say that Joshi wrestling is one of the most exciting wrestling you can watch and you can listen and hear all about it right here on the Joshi podcast. Before I get to that big main event interview with Aki, I again want to thank you guys for downloading and listening to this episode of the Joshi pod. If you'd like to follow the show on Twitter, you can uh, follow us at the Joshi pod. Remember to visit Pro Wrestling Tees to support your uh, favorite Joshi performers like past guests Nicole Savoy and Kikio. I'll put a link for the Joshi wrestlers who have Pro Wrestling Tees stores on the show notes. It's a great way to support the women. Uh, Enjoy the second half of my chat with Aki. Arigato gozaimasu! Let's talk okay, a little okay. bit about some of the women at Gato Move and tell me what makes them so special. Let's start with um, the ace, Mesa Ruga. What makes her so special? She's a genius. She really is. Like, I've never seen anybody more natural with wrestling. And not from the day, like, not from now. She was like that the day I first saw her. Like, uh, I remember Sakura san showing her training videos to Mahasan. And asking, isn't this girl like really great? I, I, I want her to debut and Masan going like, it hasn't been even a month. And Sakura san's going like, no, 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 no. But this, like, this kid could do it. I'm sure about she could do it. And Masan goes like, like, I have to get that out. Basically saying like, it's too soon. But she goes like, no, 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 I think she can do it. So <laughs> I remember saying that. I remember the first month she started wrestling, her reacting to literally every little things. I remember her being like genuinely happy. Like it's not that she's that is not a character. Like n- in any way, that is how Mei Chan is. She just brightens up. It's like a sun running around in your room. <laughs> like it really is. Like that when she's like ah, those reactions of her. That's how she reacts while she eats like bread with honey. <laughs> <They're> like <laughs> no joking. She is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Like it, she really is. She reacts to like that. If if she if and she's she's also like, in if, you could call it like selling, but like in reaction wise to like if Sago San gives her a cake, she at so like her reactions are legendary in, in a way. Like and Sago San goes like, see, see Aki, that's how you need to do it. That's how you make me happy. I know she doesn't. <laughs> I I like I don't even know if she likes it or not. But she reacts the way that this is the best cake that has ever existed in the world <laughs> ever. So, yeah, I got to talk. Charming. I got to talk to her a little bit when I was over there. She she is a sweetheart, and she she told me oh, she was she worried that she's definitely. she's like I look so small, people won't take me serious. You know, she was telling me <laughs> her broken English. I'm like, no, you look small, but go in there and beat them up. They'll they'll take you serious. So it was pretty cool oh, to chat with her. A bit. Yeah, she is incredible. She is gonna be something though. Like she is becoming something. Like uh, especially. Uh, uh, in the last six months, uh, ever since I left, I'm starting to realize the way she, like her matches are fixed now. She's she's going places. Oh, they're putting her against in, in the, two, the top two, names. Yeah, right in now. two three years, it, it she'll be unbelievable. I think in, just, in a year. She just wrestled. Uh, where's I'm sorry. Like she's gonna be un, like, uh, I, I'm I'm not gonna say like unrecognizable, but she's gonna be something else in within a year. I'm very sure. Yeah, she just wrestled um, Kagetsu, I think, yesterday. Today, actually. Today, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's. I mean, she's she's getting the top matches right now, and she's had a little run with Seedling already, too, and stuff, so she's she's on her way. Oh, yeah. She, she wrestles uh, to a lot of places. She wrestles, like, Pure J sometimes. She wrestles Seedling. She wrestles uh, one more. Sendai Go. She has some yep. regular there as well, and got to move, obviously. Her schedule mm-hmm. is, like, 15, 16 matches a month. Yeah, she's she's really really good. All right, next person, Mitsuru. Tell me something about Mitsuru. I, I think she's amazing as well. Mm-hmm. Mitsuru is the is the most interesting in my in the way I think because I've never heard her say like this is actually very true because I talk to her a lot. 
NXT might be like uh, my best friend in Got to Move. So like, I've never heard her say like wrestling is fun. Mm. I've never heard her say that. She says like the way it's like, I'm not. In her eyes, she's not good enough yet to enjoy wrestling. Mm. Like it's still, the things she lacks are still enough that she feels more about them than she like about being like genuinely enjoying. Like Mei Chan enjoys wrestling. You can just tell mm-hmm. from the minute she gets there to the second she goes back, it's just the best time she can have. <laughs> Mr. Chan is like a fight for her. It's like she's out there giving it her all and just uh, like uh, wrestling, talking wrestling is really interesting with her. I did actually an interview for, with her for Got the Move. I think they're going to translate it or something, but th- that's going to be great. You, you're going to hear a lot from her about this. But she yeah. is the most interesting in, in the way I see it. And also her style. I think her style is, is so much. I think the most known got to move in a way, uh, like traditionally, she wrestles very technical submission based game, which is in that small room. It doesn't look that like dynamic and th- those like sparky things like Mei Chan is just jumping around like like a ball of energy or Lulu, which is just something else. I'll, like totally like we'll, we'll get to her in a second. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, you know, more with like the power in that small space, it's like a, like the limitations of that room doesn't stop them in a yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Like it just, it just pours out of everywhere from that small room. But Mr. like fits in very neatly. She does everything so neat. Like her every moment, her moves are very precise and neat, which yeah, is she's... very contradictory to like the overflowing style of what the move. But in my view, that makes it the most interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, you need that. You need something different than, than the rest of it. Yeah. So oh, uh, she's, she's now like the big sister, oh, she? like the big <laughs> intimidating, but very kind and very beautiful big sister of yeah. got the move. She's basically the leader. She's the leader of got the move now. What like she Yuna? really is. <laughs> Yuna Mizumori. Tell me a little bit about her. You know, Mon, uh, how to describe, you know, Mon. you know, Mon, you know how she acts like the pineapple. Mm-hmm. When she talks about pineapple, that's how she really is. <laughs> like, not the part when she like wrestles and like super ah, let's go. Like, not that part. But when she talks about like pineapples, she really does love pineapples. She actually owns like I know like at least three to four shirts that has pineapples on them. <laughs> I'll have to bring her something when I go over there. <laughs> yeah, please do. She will love it. Like, <laughs> and she actually told me once. Saying like she didn't really love pineapples that much when she started, but now she's like really, really loves them. <laughs> she's done them enough that she like really are in love with them as much as she like shows. She has like sweatshirts with like pineapples all of them, like at least two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about uh, Obi Sayaka Obi Hero. Ah, uh, Obi Chan is the is the kindest. Obi Chan is the first friend I made in the move, even though. To this day, she, she doesn't speak a single word of English. And I didn't speak a single word of English, Japanese at that point, And we still talked for like 30 minutes the first day. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what we talked about. But she was the one, she, she was the one, like always the one to approach. Uh, are you okay? You, you good? Uh, please eat. Like she's the one, she, uh, she's the one who made chancos most of the time at that point. Now, like everybody takes turn in making them because everybody loves making them. Everybody uses you so much when you make chanko. Even I have made once a chanko in Gato Move because it's, it feels so good when everybody eats your chanko afterwards and go like, oh, this is so good. It, uh, that's what I needed and with the beer and stuff. It's the best feeling. Yeah, like getting was, praises was, from those, that group of people. She was she was the nicest to me too when I went there. She was the first one to come up and say hello to me and, and introduce yeah, herself. She's and, and the she nicest. Just, yeah. she's, she has a card of gold. Like she really she's that kind of person like through and through i don't think she doesn't even have like a character or something she just that's what obichan is she's a boulder of energy she's clumsy she's actually that clumsy in real life as well (laughs) which kind of hurts her career because she had like two injuries just like with the clumsiness last year which prolonged her like uh which increased her injury to like from three months to like nine months i'm gonna go visit six months extra 
I'm going to go visit her restaurant, so she better not spill anything on me if she's clumsy. <laughs> no, no, no. Restaurant, she's very good. Food wise, <laughs> she's the best. She makes the best food, by the way. Uh, yeah, but... Like, I've, I've eaten everything that she, like, she's made sushi, sashimi, like, udon, katsudon, like, afuachanko all the time. Making but I've eaten now. everything for her. Yeah. <laughs> go to Ebisco. Yep, I'm going to go. I, I definitely have to go. Maybe we should go together. Yeah, of course, of course. I'll, I'll take you out to dinner. Oh, thank you very much, man. We're we'll going to have fun. Every score is the best. <laughs> All right, so there's three younger people I want to ask you about now, too. First, I'm going to ask okay. you about Che. I like Che. I like everything about Che. She's such, she seems so emotional and, and into it and, and everything. She such, seems like a, such a sweetheart. Oh, she is a sweetheart. Funny story. Uh, my last, before I left Japan... The last training I went to, because I really wanted to do one training uh, with uh, Gatomu at Ichigaya. The day I left is the day I did that training. That was Chie Chan's first training. Mm. Yeah, I was there for her first training. She was so sincere. To, to, to now, too. Like, and she really is very emotional. Like, she actually cried when uh, she cried so much that day. Like, Obi-Chan even gave, uh, uploaded her photos and stuff. The, the day Obi-Chan like, announced that she's going to take a break because of her, like, her injuries are starting to like, fire up again. Mm-hmm. So it needs to take time off so it doesn't become like, a big thing like last time. So she actually cried a lot that day too because like, the senpai who takes care of her, because Obi-Chan is very kind, obviously, to everybody. So chie Tan too. Uh, and she is very shy too. Very shy. <laughs> she is like... Mm, very nice, sincere, very sincere about pro wrestling as well. Like she trains. Do you know when she trains? Like she mm-hmm. has a uh, she she has a full time job. So right now she's doing a full time job. She does everything, finishes her job, and then comes to Ichigaya to train for like two and a half hours. Wow. Sometimes till the last train. Wow. Yes. Okay, and so let's like, talk, let's. That, mm, yes. Uh, go ahead. No, no, no uh, it's just like. Uh, this is for to make up for the sessions that she couldn't do while everybody was doing it. Mm. So she's so like, putting the extra time in late. Extra time, yeah. Even if she's just alone with Sakura-san, <laughs> she does that too. Talk about Rin-Rin. Uh, Rin-Rin might have the most potential in a way. Because uh, she was a child idol. You, you know that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she, she was in like an idol group. She danced and stuff. Her voice, you can tell, like now she sings. She has like a very quality voice as well, even just with her singing from her background, uh, especially in that. The best thing would be like uh, she became very serious because she quit her idol group just to do wrestling more, which, which I realized was really great because it means like she's more serious about uh, giving her all in wrestling, even if she has to hold off her idol career. Which uh, I'll like to me, uh, thinking wise, meant a lot because she's like the perfect age, but like the perfect age for Gato Move. Her personality matches to that as really well. She's not shy at all, like <laughs> to, especially to appeal. Like is that's what she's done always. She's she was like that since like, maybe ten years old or something. But she's great on like, uh, especially her t- her Twitter is amazing. But it's in Japanese, so it's really hard for you to like understand that the kind of stuff she does. But she promotes really well. Her mic skills are like, see, uh, were you at New Year's in uh, Adi Jigaya? She did the Queen wave. Like, see, what she did was like, uh, hello, my name is Rin. Rin. Uh, she did like the her. I told like what she did in the match today. And then she goes, I love you, blew a flying kiss and did the queen wave with her hand. <laughs> very, like, very seriously. And then just said, I felt so amazed by it. <laughs> like, you have no idea. That girl can do anything. Like, if she puts her mind to you, she's very, uh, and she's, she just started high school. Jeez. Like, imagine the three years she's going to spend with Sakura-san and learning from, like, Mahasan, Chon-san, Hagani-san, like, everybody in that quality years. And once she's done with high school and she really gets into it, imagine like seeing her in five years when she's 20 Jeez. with like Mei Chan being like a big main eventer at that point and them going at it. It's going to be a very, very bright future. I'm really looking forward to it. They're about Especially the same size. They're about the same size too. 
they are about the same size. They fight a lot about like who's taller. <laughs> <laughs> the last person. True. <laughs> the last person I'm going to ask you about is the person Pumi made super famous, Lulu Pencil. Yes. The legendary Lulu Pencil. Lulu Pencil. Legendary Lulu Pencil. <laughs> I've never seen the power of internet before Lulu Pencil. <laughs> <laughs> like, no joking. I've never, I've never seen that kind of power. Because the first time I actually met her, like, properly was in UK when she came to do the uh, Eve shows for the... Mm-hmm. Mm, Kingdom. She won? No, not Kingdom. Uh, she, she won. won. Yep. Yeah, for She won. When she came with Mecha, I was in UK at that point. So that's when I actually met her properly for once. So I know her more as like a Westerner person than as a Japanese person. Because mm. if I had met her for the first time in Japan, she would have like greeted me as a, like a senpai. So we, I, we would have definitely talked in Japanese more than like in English. Mm-hmm. In the UK, she wants you to more do, talk more in English. So we talked most of the time in English. So I see her way less as like a Gato Move person, as a like a senior or junior in Gato Move, as just like in, as some, an individual wrestler that I know. Like in my head, that's how she registers, which is really, which was like uh, very funny because when I went to, uh, for the New Year's, when I went back, I saw her doing shows for Gato Move and she was, because she's basically like a rookie in Gato Move. So she does all the rookie stuff. And you don't see, like, if I know some wrestler from, north in, from Japan and he's like from UK or somebody who just speaks English, nobody does rookie stuff. <laughs> like, that's not, you're just a wrestler. You come to do the shows. But like in Japan, you have, if you are the, if you are the new person, you know, you do everything. You take care of the rings, you take care of the, like, uh, the preparation, the beginning, you greet all of your senpais. Like, even I do that. If I'm sitting and let's say my son comes up, I, I send up, I greet him and he greets me back. Like, that's it's just natural to me. But I didn't see Lulu in that way. So it was really funny seeing her interact, stumbling, like talking to me in English and then going back and talking to everybody in Japanese, being like super, uh, like, uh, you know, like being speaking in Kego, basically like the respectful form of like in Japanese and just being super frank with me because we know each other from London <laughs> in a way. Mm. But you were the referee, right? For the match? Yeah, yeah, I was the referee. She Funny. won. The, the whole Eve wrestling looks like a pretty fun place to be. Oh, yes. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a scene, especially that place. I had my mind just busted with ideas when I saw that place. I'm like, there's so much thing I could do here. Like, it, it, I've never had that feeling before. Because I've never seen like an intimate as intimate ring setting as Ichigaya in a mat. Because that basically is it's, that place is like a ring version of Ichigaya in a way. Because you just people literally stand on top of the ring. The balcony is like you can look under. You look down to see the ring if you're standing up on the balcony. So that was a very intimate place in that way. And speaking of like Lulu individually, what I found the most incredible in that sense which is really a twofold first is like sakura-san especially because she thought of that like to think something so much outside like the name uh, her what her character is going to be how she's going to be presenting herself her costume the catchphrases she want to use the kind of matches she will do so like she thought of everything in that mm-hmm. sense, which solidifies it like a hundredth time that Sakura-san is just beyond genius when it comes to wrestling. Her mind just works in a very unique way, which it just, you, you, you either have it or you don't. Mm-hmm. Or, and second fall is for Lulu to actually do that with so dedica- so much dedication. Like, What's what I what makes Lulu Chan like, like, and May both of them especially May in a very different way. What makes them really amazing is because when they do those moves, like just say she's doing the pencil roll, she's not doing it thinking it's funny. Like, uh, for us, we understand it's a bit like a comedy match is going on. Uh, the Western wrestler, like Western audience, sees it that way. But if you are sitting in Ichigaya and you are a Japanese audience, she is like, see her expressions are stiff. She's really going at it. 
mm-hmm. she's really trying to win even though she's doing like the pencil roll or you know the recent like the poke in the chest where the person just dies so like <laughs> like or when she like barely she's super scared to go to the windows but she's can't really <laughs> jump from there to that so she jumps down and then jumps like all of those moves the how seriously she does that is what makes it how incredible it is it's brilliant it's brilliant yeah cuz like her dedication is i think in oh, cuz like it's not an easy thing to do if you are like a like a, especially a rookie cuz rookies are supposed to be fired up they used to win the fight every rookie is like that in japan there's no rookie like lulu chan ever <laughs> in japanese history who's lit, who's like two weeks to wrestle that's basically it if you want to say it with one word <laughs> so she's like to like to believe that kind of character from day one and doing it with that much dedication takes it like a particular kind of either faith in the person who's asking you to do it or the a particular kind of mindset to like dedicate yourself or whichever whatever work you are given and that's Which, why she that's why she got the popularity so quickly that she did because yes, she just um, she, she owned that. it and she's she's it you know yeah she's it she really <laughs> is even i had a match with her when i was there for the new years a surprise did, bonus match how did yeah. you uh, how did you handle the rolling pencil <laughs> I, I did i did i did something i did something <laughs> i something, had a something mean for like no it was kind of good uh, i had a pencil for 30 seconds <laughs> I the a pencil came rolling to me and I just picked it up. I'm like, "Ah, oh, got a pencil." <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch the that, roof. That actually that's what I really did. <laughs> ah, I saw that. I I did see that actually. <laughs> okay, Aki, so you're in India right now. What's what's the future hold for you? Uh uh currently uh after the passport and the visa stuff sorted out, I think uh I'm most likely heading to Japan. for a three month tour starting march ending maybe like at the uh, the beginning of june or something so i'm going to spend the next three months in japan and that is what i've decided for the next three months beyond that no idea maybe uk or maybe japan again what about the us come on over <laughs> I, i can get you on some shows out here <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> i know but like us is uh maybe uh, maybe this year if i got some good opportunity or something but uh it's uh, i got a spare bedroom uh, you can stay in <laughs> thank you very much bro you're too kind you're very kind but like yeah it's so you, it's a big expansion to do so you're home year. now right what is yeah. your how does your family look at you now after you've gone to japan you've succeeded you've wrestled in thailand you've succeeded How do they how does your the rest of your family I'm sure your father's super proud but how does the rest of the family who maybe doubted before how do they look at you now mm, Uh very badly than before my parents I think uh, my dad and my mom especially did I don't think they doubted it they were more worried for me mostly like they're worried worries weren't really about like my career as like other people most like relatives and stuff or friends were more worried about the career part of it my family was mostly worried about like because they don't like it's a kayfabe country and even if it wasn't kayfabe it's a pretty like generally kind of you the chances of you getting hurt are pretty high than doing an office job mm-hmm. so my my parents most of their worries were about like me getting hurt their baby boy getting hurt yeah Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. So like, uh, uh, but now that I've been doing it pretty long, and they see like, uh, you know, I haven't been hurt. We luckily in my career, seriously, uh, till now. So uh, they are a bit more relaxed about it now, because uh, I can explain to them better, like how how do I do it, and I'm not doing too crazy stuff. Like I'm in like. it's a decision that i made to not do too crazy mm-hmm. yet maybe i would do but i would be, i would try to be careful for you guys if i talk to them in that way now they kind of believe me more than they did before so they are more relaxed now as as for like uh them seeing me like uh, uh me proud my dad hasn't like they neither me nor him like still things like if if i talk about i did that he would just go like yeah but you know there's wait there's a lot more to do So don't be too happy yet. 
I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, I'm not typical fine. dad. I, like, it, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's much things to do. I'm like, yeah, of course. No matter like, where you, how, well, no matter where you're on the like, world. Yeah, no matter where you're on the world, dad, dads are the same. <laughs> dads are the same. It's like, come on. Like, you, what, what about this board? Is, is the wrestler supposed to look like that? Why, why, why are you so light? Be, get bigger. Wrestlers are supposed to be bigger. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'll get bigger. <laughs> There's always something. <laughs> Aki, where can we find you on social media? Uh, uh, Balian X Aki. B-A-L-I. I think uh, it's the same on Twitter, Facebook, and on Instagram. It's B A L I Y A N X A K K I Balian X Aki. It's the same uh, on I think on the all three platforms. And I'll put them. I'll put those in the show notes as well, guys. Oh, please, thank you. Yeah, uh, I want to thank you so much for being on the show, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you again real soon, Aki. Oh, it was a pleasure, totally on my side. I had a lot of fun talking to you. I love got the moves to talking about. I can talk about them for like 10 hours straight. Wouldn't get tired at all. Wouldn't even need food. But, but like, <laughs> so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And thank you so, so much for always like letting people know about got to move and introducing new people to got to move and, you know, bringing more. They had like 70% foreign fans on one show on the 6th. 6th of January, they had... I think 40 something fans out of 60 or 60 something that were foreigners. Wow. It was an incredible outcome. And it, it all ha- happened because, you know, like fans like you and people who appreciate got to move really put the word out. Like it's a really fan driven company. And I'm always very grateful for you guys. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.